Hey everyone, it's me, David Jost, the original Mighty Morphin Blue Power Ranger, and you're watching 96 Studios. Do you guys know what time it is? It's Morphin Time! I'm Cody. And I'm Cisco, and I'm gonna talk for a long time, because I love to talk. First, we're gonna start with the LA Rams, because, you know, that's my team. Then we're gonna go to My Hero Academia, because, you know, I love anime, <laughs> and I just recently started that. Then we're gonna talk about burritos, because I love food, as you can see. I just, mm, love a good burrito. And uh, eventually we'll get to what we're eventually doing here. But uh, how, what are you going to do today, Cody? I'm going to go stand in line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cisco. I'm Cody. And we're here at the David Yost uh, signing here at Harley's Toys and Comics here at the Tucson Mall here in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, once again, we're running a little bit behind, but let's go jump into it. Another Power Ranger. Another Power Ranger, but great Power Rangers from the 90s, one of the original. Yeah. So yeah. let's go knock this one out. Cisco in 96 Studios. I'm here with David Yost, Billy the Blue Ranger, original Mighty Morphin. How are you doing today, brother? I'm very good, thank you. And thank you for coming into Tucson. How are you liking this so far? Well, uh, I love Tucson. I used to come here a lot as a kid because my totally. grandparents used to live here. Okay. So, uh, you know, I used to get to come when I was like seven, eight years old. So Tucson's nothing new for you? Nothing new. Okay, that's great. So at least you're adapted to the heat. You know exactly what to I, expect. I actually love the heat. I'm one of the weird people. <laughs> Your time with the uh, Mighty Morphin series were the the first gen, the yes. first ones up, the oh, first out that, for, knocked it out of the hut. You were like the Brad Pitt for everybody growing up in, ni in the 90s. You guys were recognized everywhere. Oh, okay. You guys were Brad Pitt. You guys you guys were household names. Yes. How did that affect you, your, your young life? Well, I mean, it's obviously an interesting uh, experience to go through because, you know, it's, when you move to Hollywood to become an actor and you get on a successful show, uh, it kind of goes with the territory, but... It is new, like you, you know, we filmed almost the entire first season before it even started airing, so we had no way to gauge how popular it was gonna be. So, you know, you start going to Target, you start going to the grocery store, and you start seeing people staring at you, and you're like, why are they staring at me? Because you forget that yeah. you're on TV, and then it starts uh, dawning on you, oh yeah, I'm on a TV show, but then it starts getting a little bit, as the show became more and more popular, uh, it just, you know, it's like, you have to kind of like pick your battles about how you're gonna go out. Okay. So I used to like really, okay, I'm gonna go to the mall, I'm going straight to the store, I'm gonna get this specifically and leave. Otherwise, all the little kids start yeah. freaking out. So yeah, so back then, you, you have to pick and choose your stores. Do you have to still do that now? Do people look at you like, are you that guy? Every day, at least once a day. Uh, once a day? People, once a day at least, somebody's like, you are that guy, uh, okay. or you're Billy, or you're David, or can I take a photo with you? Uh, okay. So you know, it's it's so humbling and it's such an honor. Uh, I would never trade it for the world. Okay. And, you know, every day, at least when somebody recognizes me, they're like, you have no idea. Thank you for my childhood, or like you're an icon, you're a legend, uh, you're a hero. So we don't hear any ever ever hear anything bad. So it's always a, a really positive experience. Okay. And just to know that we 
the characters that we played influenced so yeah. many people's lives around the world. Uh, it's so humbling and such an honor. So uh, it's really cool. Oh yeah, yeah. As you see all the line that you had, you had today, yes, you've uh, touched the hearts of millions yes. out there, especially the '90s kids like myself. Yes. Um, you're our fifth ranger that we have interviewed for '96 Studios. Okay. Uh, last person we interviewed was uh, Jason. Uh, um, Font? Jason Font. We, we interviewed Jason Font. We also did Steve Cardenas was our last one. Okay. And uh, he talked about this movie right here, which I'm sure you recognize. I don't. What is that one? It's the, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. Uh, that, I think you're a part of this. Oh, yeah. I did, I did do that. <laughs> and um, how, I, I heard that you were doing... He talked about it a little bit. You guys were filming this movie in Australia, mm -hmm. but also filming the show at the same time. Is that right. true? Yeah, it is true. I mean, when we originally went to Australia to film the movie, we were only supposed to be there for three months. Okay. And uh, because of a lot of, what they do with movies is like, you'll film some stuff and then they do test groups and they test it with like little kids to yeah. see how they react to everything that we've been doing. It wasn't testing as great as they would like. Mm -hmm. So they rewrote a lot of stuff and they replaced an actress. And so we went back and we had to refilm a lot of the, the movie. So it ended up taking us almost six months to film the movie instead. And because of that, we got behind on the TV show. So uh, they had us film the movie and the TV show at the same time. Okay. And then we were doing our voiceovers for previous episodes for uh, the TV show because we were so far behind. So we'd go in when you see us in costume and you know, we'd be like, kia, kia, doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But there was a point where we worked 21 days straight mm -hmm. without a day off and that was really, that was difficult. You, you still know? gotta find time to learn your lines, hit the yeah, gym. Yeah, it's, like, it's like 14 hour days. And you know? do voiceover work, right? Because you guys had to go into the studio and do your voiceover work Correct. for the show, right? Correct. So, and that's a, that's a lot of your play. Yeah. You, you know, would you ever go back to that? Would you want to do another stand on the Mighty Morphins? I mean, I would do another stint on it for sure, uh, you know, but I would like to be in control of the hours a little bit. Oh, there you And go. I wouldn't work 21 days straight. So <laughs> no, no, 21 that's, days. That's why we have unions, and that's why it's so important to work union uh, so that you kind of mitigate all that kind of stuff so you can't be overworked, you know? Right. Um, so with the merchandise, you've seen your face on toys. Everything. On everything. <laughs> I wanted to show you something that okay. us here in Arizona, Tucson especially, um, we're kids that grew up in the 90s, myself, with a kid not with a lot of money, uh, we had to be Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on a budget. So I've had this for a while. Okay. And uh, this is a, uh, a <laughs> this Blue is Ranger. Awesome. Little, I, I don't think you've ever seen anything like this, but this is something you can pick up at the, the swap meet here. Yes. We have the, the Mighty Morphin the, the, the back. Swap meet? Yeah, the, yeah, there you go. And then uh, you have the little mask in front. So everybody wants to be, uh, yeah, it, it's <laughs> just one of those things. Awesome. It's, and I've had this forever. And it's one of those things as a kid, you want to be a superhero. You yeah, want to be one of those people that that you see on TV. You want to emulate that person. Right. For me, with the Blue Ranger. <laughs> so That's really it's nice. just one of those things that I wanted to show you that even though how you say we couldn't get the high end quality stuff, you know, the mask right. and, the, and the lasers and the and the and the how you the weapons. We've always wanted. Everybody wants to emulate a Power Ranger. Right. You were, you're the first heroes that the kids from the '90s could look at and be like, "I want to be that guy." And I really appreciate that you were the, the the face. You were the the one that I was like, "That's the guy I want to be." Aww. You know, because everyone wants to be Jason. Everyone wants to be Tommy. I always wanted to be the blue one. I appreciate because, that. Because you know, I was like, "That's the guy. The guy with the glasses. I could, <laughs> I could recognize that guy." Thank you, and I, w I will say it. I mean, I've, I've been fortunate enough to travel all over the world and go to a bunch of different Comic Cons, and usually, uh, you know, the homemade uh, cosplay that I see sometimes yeah. is like far superior. There's this one kid that came uh, to a Comic Con, he was 19 years old, and so, you know, he's like a younger kid that found Power Rangers, and he was like really into the Blue Ranger, and he made an entire Blue Ranger costume out of like duct tape. So like duct tape now comes in like colors, you know, and so like he duct taped his, his whole self as the Blue Ranger, and it was like one of the most amazing creative things I've ever seen. So, you know, just because you can't afford something, I love what you're saying, is like, yep. you know, you want to emulate somebody, and like, you know, you'll do whatever it takes to create that costume. So, uh, so that's so awesome. Yeah, and I, and I passed that down to my son. Yeah. Amy oh, Amy Joe Johnson's Amy jo calling Johnson right now. Here. <laughs> right here on 96 Studios. You ain't going to get that anywhere else. Bring it into the. Can we answer? Can we tell her to come? No. She'll, she'll freak no, out. No, no, no problem. Order, okay. No problem. We'll go ahead and wrap this up right now. But uh, my last question is um, between the con conventions or more intimate settings like the local stores here. Which ones do you prefer? Do you like the big, spectacular Comic-Cons or do you like the intimate, more time with the fans here at the stores? 
I mean, I think as time goes on, uh, this is uh, way more fun for me because I can control it a little bit more, mm -hmm. and I don't feel as guilty because sometimes at Comic Cons, you know, you guys go there and you spend all this money, and you there's so much that you have to do, mm -hmm. uh, and you want to see all these people and buy all these things, and so like this just kind of you know makes it you're only here really for me, okay. and so I don't I don't feel I can take more time with you and spend time with you and talk to you people as much as possible. Uh, so for me, the the intimacy of this works out a lot better. But I mean, the comic cons are obviously a lot of fun. There's so much going on. So, but for me, comic comic book shops right now are really cool. Okay, I really appreciate it. And we'll go wrap it up here. But my last words to you is, um, I'm actually the nervous I've ever been interviewing <laughs> any of the Rangers right now because you are one of the ones I looked up the most out of all the Rangers, and we've done Jason David Frank and Jason Font and Steve Cardenas and Jazz Bell Dewalia and I really appreciate everything you've done. The, um, my personal thing is I wanted to be a hero, I wanted to help people, and I tried to be as close to the Rangers as I can. So being next to you right now is a lifelong dream of mine. I really appreciate it. And, and here from 96 Studios, I'm signing out for Cody, myself, and Dan David Yost. Uh, stay tuned for the next one we go on.